You were specifically banned by the Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, from visiting that country. Mm -hmm. uh, he faces a very tough election uh, in the next few days. Um, if he doesn't win, are you going to try to go back and, and do you stand by your call for a boycott of Israel? I certainly hope uh, that the people of Israel make a different decision. Um, and my hope is that they recognize that his existence, his policies, um, his rhetoric really uh, is contradictory to the peace that we are all hoping that that region receives and receives soon. Um, just right now, if you look at the annexation that's taking place, um, for many of us in Congress, there has been a long-standing um, <coughs> support for a two-state solution mm -hmm. uh, and this annexation now um, is going to make sure that that peace process uh, does not happen and we will not get to a two-state solution. I think what is really important is for people to understand that you have to give people the opportunity uh, to seek the kind of justice they want in a peaceful way. And I think the opportunity to boycott, divest, sanction um, is the kind of pressure that leads to that peaceful uh, process. As in all diplomacy, Truly pursuing peace isn't just about punishing bad behavior. We must support efforts to end the occupation and see, reach, achieve two-state solution. I believe firmly that the path to peace does not lie in a violent means. As Martin Luther King Jr. said, peace is not merely a distant goal that we seek, but a means by which we arrive at that goal. We should condemn in the strongest terms violence that perpetuates the occupation, whether it is perpetuated by Israel, Hamas, or individuals. But we, if we are going to condemn violent means of resisting the occupation, we cannot also condemn nonviolent means. We cannot simultaneously say we want peace, then openly oppose peaceful means to hold our allies accountable. It is precisely it is precisely when people say, when people feel hopeful, when people feel that nonviolence does not work, that their voices won't be heard, that they turn towards violence. This week, I introduced a resolution with civil rights leader, our colleague John Lewis and Rashida Talib, who know the importance of nonviolence movements. It recognizes the proud history of boycott movements in this country dating back to the Boston Tea Party. We should honor these movements and that history. And we should honor our commitment to the principles that say we must hold our friends to the same standards as we hold our adversaries. I understand and appreciate the bipartisan nature and history of this committee. In fact, there are two bills today that I am co-sponsoring with Republicans. And I have co-sponsored the Sri Lankan resolution with Mr. Johnson, Ms. Johnson and the resolution with Mr. Zeldin. I am also proud to sponsor Mr. Lowenthal's resolution that we just voted on and, incur and excited that every single person was on board on our side. I will not be supporting the end block package today. Mr. Chairman, I thank you and I yield back. In our democratic societies, we should welcome legitimate debate on how best to honor our values and to advance our priorities without questioning loyalty or patriotism. <laughs> this month, the full House came together to condemn the anti-Semitic myth of dual loyalty and all forms of bigotry with a resolution that, quote, rejects the perpetuation of anti-Semitic stereotypes in the United States and around the world, including the pernicious myth of dual loyalty and foreign allegiance, especially in the context of support for the United States-Israel alliance. I simply declare to be anti-Semitic is to be anti-American. It has no place in our country.
We must also be vigilant against bigoted or dangerous ideologies masquerading as policy, and that includes BDS. Last week, we introduced the Schneider, that would be Brad Schneider of Illinois, and Nather, that would be Jerry Nather of New York. The Schneider-Nather resolution in the House that explicitly opposes the BDS movement warning that, did you know this, it does not recognize, and many of its supporters don't know or explicitly deny, it does not recognize the right of Jewish people to national self-determination. The resolution goes on to recognize that BDS movement does not favor a two-state solution and undermines the possibility for a negotiated solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict.